Hello and welcome to Musical Lyrical Lingo. We are your hosts, Tim and LJ. Today and every week we will be discussing musicals, but specifically what they taught us. And we're back. We are back. With our own episode, Hello. another Musical Lyrical Lingo for this week. We hope you enjoyed last week. It was a wee bit different. Um, and we hope we didn't let ourselves down on the yeah. behind the scenes oh. creative podcast. <laughs> It sounded like we knew what we were talking about, right? I know, and it was, it was actually hope. really fun going on to somebody else's. And you know, because we've got another surprise of being guests on another podcast, it kind of feels like... They all want us at the moment, I don't know. they? It feels like we're real proper podcasters right now. Proper, proper influencers, <laughs> proper podcasters, proper celebrities. Like, what can I say? Roll the carpet out and get my canopies. <laughs> I'm a writer. <laughs> Just window Mary Poppins now. Like, I mean, it's honestly, if they don't give me the part of what else can I do, right? Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to do. I was going to, what height are you? Oh, I have a wee funny thing about my height. Well, I was thinking, you're looking for a Michael. Do you think you could? Height it on. It's the weirdest <laughs> thing with my height. I don't know what my height is, but I'm not tall, tall enough. I, I, I would rather be a much taller person. Right, well, I'm five foot nine. I'm not far off you, like... I don't, am I 5'10", 5'11"? I don't think I'm 5'6", at the most. I just okay, so I'm 5'9". Five... <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually do think I'm around the 5'10", 5'11". Okay. I am slightly taller than you, but not when we're sitting down. I know, we, I we had to, really... I had to readjust myself there because we looked we... at ourselves in the camera and honestly, Lauren looked like she was a giant <laughs> um, beside me. It was just no posture. No, no, no. I don't mean that. Like, as in height. The height of a giant. Okay. Yeah. You're wearing makeup, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> mm, so annoying person. <laughs> I'm so past remarkable. Here's me. Portrait of perfection and all that. Of course, of course. As long as I look at look from this side and not this oh, side, because there's a wee bit of bed head this side. And oh right, something or something that you other. had a one of those people that knew what side of your face you. No, better. my face is perfectly symmetrical. Yeah, but no, we're I on to a tangent here that people, you know. I know. I was just going to say, quick, because your dad's going to complain again. Ah, oh, listen. I think he stopped <laughs> listening again. To be quite honest with you, he, he did two more episodes and then went stuff this. <laughs> I did shout at him uh, yesterday. Did you? I was like, I believe our <laughs> intros are too long. He says, "Well, I did think it was a little bit much." That's so funny. Um, at the moment, we're we're getting ourselves show ready, aren't we, Lauren? We are. We're right in the thick of it. Actually, by the time this this episode comes out, it will all be over, hopefully, mm -hmm. and nobody hopefully. will have died. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm at that stage now okay. where it just needs to happen. So it's our stage girls end of year showcase coming up this mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. So it's a busy week, isn't it? With tech on it Wednesday, is. show number one on Thursday, show number two on Saturday. Mm -hmm. The venue we use, you see, has to like uses their own venue on a Friday night. So Hi, it, means, rude. it means we can't get a three and one, mm. you know, full sweep. We've but it's kind of nice for the kids. To kind of have a bit of a break. No, it definitely is. And it's good for energy levels and yeah. concentration and all the rest of it. But for me, selfishly, I just want it done. Dun, dun, dun. But so the, the thing is, we could probably sell three nights in a row. Oh, don't be suggesting that now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, because it's all, everybody wants to go and see their family member. And it's very uh -huh. strange. Yeah. Yes. Okay, he's, he's, he's yeah. actually... No, I'm just... I'm, I'm, link, I'm linking in where we are currently to uh, one of the, the songs in our musical lyrical lingo musical this year. Okay. Or this week, sorry. Yeah. Um, and I'm going, oh, it's so true. Like, <laughs> we're just at that stage now where it's all a wee bit like, oh, yeah. what's going to happen? Another. <laughs> another opening <laughs> of another show, <laughs> which comes from what musical, Lauren? <gasps> Kiss Me Kate. It is indeed. So we're talking about Kiss Me Kate. And it was only when I started researching this musical that the love for this musical came flowing back to me. I kind of forgotten what a wee gem it oh, was. It's special. Yeah, I, I agree. But you know when you haven't seen it or heard it for a long time you kind of forget sometimes okay, especially so it's when there's shelved low... for a little yeah, bit yeah especially when new musicals or different musicals kind of come up you kind of forget but it's all it all came back to me 
I adore. Kiss yeah, Musical. I'm in a I'm a, I'm in a Kiss Me Kit love bubble. Yeah, right now. I I I'm right there with you. I can't wait to find out why you love it so much. Oh really? Yeah yeah yeah. It's yeah it that interests me why this one you're half a head oh, out of the video love oh sorry you well you are moving that... about a little bit excuse it me it feels like you've got ants in your pants so i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna shift myself i'm okay? just so full of energy you just and are. bubble it's like, like... You're, you're too darn hot and just needed to move oh here there's another wee, wee <laughs> hint of the, one of the musical numbers so anyway in cole porter's first and only fully integrated musical which i did not realize it was his only full integrated musical well here is the first musical lyrical lingo for me mm -hmm. because i read that and went integrated musical what what does that mean so for anybody out there that doesn't know what an integrated musical is the songs advance the plot the songs flow directly from the dialogue mm -hmm. and the songs express the characters who sing them yes so for anybody who didn't know doesn't know what that terminology is that's what an integrated musical is so most musicals are integrated yeah. as it's as it appears yeah. to be um but anyway yeah um kiss me kate was cole porter's first fully integrated musical baltimore gangsters muscle in on a shakespearean actor's production of the taming of the shrew one of w willie oil shakespeare's yeah um hits the show was so good one critic dared to say it was better than the original i absolutely agree yeah i don't know if <laughs> willie shakespeare would agree <laughs> on willie shakespeare quite exciting that um there is a yet another concert version of a musical coming what um what's that musical that i love it oh oh oh, oh um and about you and William Francis Shakespeare. were talking about it. Oh my goodness, it's just slipped out oh, of my mind. And it, Something's it, rotten. Something rotten. Something it's rotten. Co it's coming to London uh, for a one night special. Yeah. Concert style with Jason. Um, Manfred, Manfred, that's the only... I'm going, really? There's plenty of other people out there that could play the bard. Mm. No, I don't think he is playing the bard. Is he playing bottom? Oh, I don't think Who it knows? was mentioned. Who actually cares? Because it's Jason Manford. Bite me. I don't read him. Okay. Anyway, yeah, but that's quite exciting. It is, but because then I hope, well, well, I hope that it will, will keep, you know, have some sort of interest then. It blows my mind that that show, Something Rotten, hasn't had a West End yeah. production but yet. But again, how weird we talked about it. And then all yeah. of a sudden, the same with, guess what's going on to her? Calamity J. Oh, guess we won't be buying tickets. <laughs> Me. I will be. Um, but everything we talk about, all of a sudden. Yeah. So. It's, uh, yeah, that is a bit freaky. Do -do 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 -do. Anyway. Anyway, Cole Porter's shows dominated Broadway in the 1930s. I love Cole Porter. Yeah. And I love Cole Porter's musicals and music. Well, maybe for anybody that's sort of hearing us for the first time that would be anything what? goes Where and they one been? that we haven't done high society yeah i don't know well maybe not do high society we will. the music's great the show's pants okay. anyway but by the mid 40s with cole porter's failing health himself and his wife's serious illness not to mention his back-to-back -back failures of his shows porter's stocks were low and he also said at the time, with the likes of Irving Berlin, who had the hits with Annie Get Your Gun, and Rodgers and Hammerstein, with their, yeah. they had just had a massive hit with Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, it, he said it made it harder for anybody else also to Which, have a hit. Isn't that really interesting mm. that somebody who was so talented and successful at one point just kind of got that little frustration and felt like he was couldn't break into the industry again because it's, of these other people? It's like anybody though, with within their, you know, their role. Like, you know, you work really hard to get really damn good at what mm -hmm. you do, but there will always be yeah. more and fresher yeah. and new people coming along, which is why you have to keep yeah. keep your game up. Do you know what I mean? Because so, it's very easy to get shouldered yeah. out of the way. And I think True. maybe Cole Porter kind of felt that a bit. So what did he do? He crafted an intricate show within a show structure. We've mm -hmm, seen this before, mm -hmm. Lauren, haven't we? It's almost like if we're in, if we're feeling, or if we yeah. have um, any doubts, let's roll out a show within but a then show concept. They're they're writing about what they know. That's very true. So yeah. that's why it it I suppose it's easier for them to create 
a production around that because they know what involved or what goes in behind the scenes and yeah. then it's nice to kind of show that to people who maybe aren't and i think it's an audience's dream like the people who go to the theater enjoy that kind of environment they yeah. want to know more about that environment look at you and your documentaries yeah like you've it. watched every documentary about any musical <laughs> there has been filmed do you know what i mean like yeah I think we so. love knowing the behind the scenes yeah, of true. what's going on so he, he, Kiss Me Kate is this show within a show structure in which every song, apart from Too Darn Hot, grows organically from the story. Mm -hmm. um, with Porter's reputation in the doldrums, love that we were doldrums, mm. I know. However, he couldn't rely on getting the big names at the time to help him. So actually his creative team he assembled on paper is an absolute blooming disaster. So... His director, John C. Wilson, was actually better known for being a producer, okay. not a director. Mm -hmm. His two producers, this made me laugh, one was actually known uh, for being a costume designer, whilst the other one was an established stage manager. So he basically had a costume designer and a stage manager being his two producers for Kiss Me Kate. But then he says that they, they aren't suitable because, I mean, they're going to have background in or they're going to have knowledge because they're in the background and they're going to like maybe have picked up on things. So, I mean, who says that just because you're a costume designer doesn't mean you could be the next I'm not so sure. I, I think if I was going into a, pr a production <laughs> or a project you would like and I was to told that the two producers <laughs> were, have never <laughs> produced before in their life and they actually are a costume designer and a stage manager, I don't know. <laughs> well, I would take Although, them on because I'm be fair, everybody for a little bit of a... I, all and I know plenty of stage managers who are proper brilliant at mm -hmm. what they do um, could be fabulous producers to be quite honest with you so I know I'm probably um, what's that contradicting myself yeah. but I'm just covering my back okay. in case they come for me you know with knives <laughs> what are you saying about stage it. managers not being able to be producers yeah. have you know it's a very difficult job yeah however <laughs> the choreographer on Kiss Me Kate was Hanya Holm who was one of the, the most influential modern dancers over time. So he got a good, you know, mm -hmm. or an established yes. choreographer. Um, so little wonder when Kiss Me Kate opened, it found itself opening in New Century Theatre, which was not quite off Broadway, but several blocks north. It was. <laughs> <laughs> um, however, despite all of these problems, Porter didn't seem to... Uh, have found the writing of a score burdensome. Actually, between February and May of 1948, Porter wrote an astonishing 25 songs. What? Full of, like, diversity. That's the thing. Like, mm -hmm. when you listen to the songs in Kiss Me Kate, they are all... They are what they should be, and they, like, link into, like, Italian music. And yeah. Di you know, Pretty they're true. very diverse. Mm. But and they're also got really good standalone songs, too. 100%. And a classic Cole Porter, full of wit. Yeah. And I think that's why I love his music so much, because mm. he is hilarious. Yeah. And he's not afraid to make fun mm -mm. or to say things in a downright offensive, witty, you know, making fun of kind of way. So 17 of those songs actually made it into the final show, many of them marked by the delicious, naughty wordplay that Porter had made his trademark. He really was very clever, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Was it a success, Lauren? It was. Good. I enjoyed it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and so did others. It uh, had a thousand performances and it was... um. Porter's only show to do so. Yeah, well, that's it. People call this Porter's masterpiece, which blows my mind when his other masterpiece in my head that is notable is Anything Goes. I know. Do you know what? Like, I'm like, that is a masterpiece as but well. But then I, I think you're right. I think you kind of forget how good Kiss Me Kate is until you're looking at it in it, you know, watching it. I think it is maybe one of those that, yeah, there's a there's maybe it's, it's forgotten about or yeah. not actually realised how clever it is. It did win the Tony for Best Musical in 1949. Yep. Um, it then went and ha ha was in West End in 1951. Yep. And then there was a film in 1953. But there have been many films, including the 1964 film, which I didn't know, so this was my musical, Erica Lengo, 
This film was recorded for the launch of BBC Two. Oh, that's yeah. cool. So it had Howard Keel, we spoke about him a few times. Him again. Um, Patricia Morrison, um, Millicent Martin, and I have forgotten um, the lovely other lady, but Her. it will come to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's one that I would have been most familiar with and adored, and we'll get, we'll get on to that. But yes, Kiss Me Kate involves the production of a musical version of The Taming of the Shrew. And if people don't know what The Taming of the Shrew, shrew is... Well, it's The Taming of the Shrew. Shrew. <laughs> the Taming of the Shrew. Um, and if you're a millennial like us, you will know the film 10 Things I Hear About You. And it's basically that. Where oh, okay. yeah. the older sister isn't that interested in dating or marriage but the younger sister is and kind of has to get the older sister a boyfriend before they are allowed so it's that story yeah and it it's yeah but it focuses on the conflict of on again off again husband and wife mm. fred graham and lily finesse and um, also there is the love of the supporting roles bill and lois so what I love too is that the book was written by a husband and wife too. Oh right, okay, yeah. So Bella and Samuel um, Spuak, they mostly did plays, films, yeah. and they are probably most known for Kiss Me Kate. But because they had a background in plays, and I think this is why I feel Kiss Me Kate and the behind the scenes has mm -hmm. got it so accurate. Um, and then it is also said that the musical was in fact based on a real husband and wife. That's right. Called Alfred Lunt and Lynn Fontaine. Yep. Um, and they were very famous for being involved in Noel Cord's plays. Yeah. Um, the Design for Living. And they have uh, a theatre named after them called the Lunt Fontaine Theatre, which currently is hosting Sweeney Todd. Even though they incessantly argued... Yes. Whilst performing opposite each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they've named a theatre after them anyway. Oh yeah, I think it's like that. <laughs> I think that they were literally what you see in Kiss Me Kate is how these two people were. Yeah. So they were um, in a 1935 production of Taming of the Shrew. Mm -hmm. Their relationship was then witnessed by future Broadway producer um, Arnold St. Suber. Mm -hmm. And in 1947, he asked then the Spuaks to write the script who they themselves were going through marital woes and okay. they then enlisted Porter. Yeah, I just think it's really cleverly written that, you know, the the relationship, the, the real life relationship between the two characters playing the leads mm -hmm. kind of totally mirrors what the the roles in The Taming of the Shrew are doing. So yeah. it's like they are playing what they are experiencing in real life. Yes. So that real, you know, the fact they're estranged lovers, mm -hmm. their cruelty to one another and mm -hmm. their history is played through yeah. the characters of Kate and... Oh my goodness. M Mer not, Fred? No, that's no. his name. What's the name in The Taming of the Shrew? Anyway. Oh, that's going to annoy me. Ber 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 Bercuccio or something? Yeah, that's it. Is that Bercuccio? I don't know, I I'm going to have to look that up. Um, do you know what I also thought was interesting? For all its initial issues, Kiss Me Kate was a triumph, as we know, mm -hmm. uh, from the off. And it was considered, it, after the first night preview uh -huh. of tryouts in Philadelphia on the 2nd of December 1948, mm -hmm. it was agreed almost uniquely in the history of musicals that the show needed no big changes before oh, it moved to Broadway. Love that. And like, when does that ever happen? You know, there's Very always rare. changes. Yeah. You know, there's always tweaks. Things are cut. New material is written in to bridge where the gaps are. The only difference was apparently five minutes of dialogue was cut to allow for an encore for Brush Up Your Shakespeare. Oh, okay. And anyone who's seen the show, that is a real highlight, yeah. isn't it? You know, um, it's fair to say that Shakespeare managed very nicely without gangsters. Uh -huh. <laughs> However, <laughs> Cole Porter throwing in a pair of comedy hoods mm. also just really lifts this show. Do you know what I mean? And Brush Up Your Shakespeare is the, the, the um, scene where the stone-faced enforcers who end up in the theatre basically chasing a, a, a debt, you yeah. know, from a bet, a bet that was made. 
uh, find themselves trapped on the wrong side of the stage curtain. Mm -hmm. So they end up telling the audience uh, what a knowledge of the board, what a knowledge of yeah. Shakespeare is really good for. And yeah. that's impressing women, apparently. And hence they go into yeah. their number, brush up your Shakespeare yeah. and you'll get your gal. Yeah. Which is thoroughly hilarious. It is. But an absolute pain in the arse to learn the lyrics for. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll maybe come on gladly. We <laughs> so, shall we go under musical lyrical English? Yeah, then? absolutely. So, I explain the uh, first one was actually finding out that it was based on um, the husband and wife team. Mm -hmm. Then, if we go to another opening, another <gasps> show. So, what is, what is your issue with this song? It's too close to the bone for me. It's okay. too close to the bone for me. The lyrics sing, four weeks you rehearse and rehearse, three weeks and it couldn't be worse. Mm -hmm. One week will it ever be right, then out of the hat it's that big first night. And that just fills me with absolute fear because that is an experience I've experienced multiple times mm -hmm. being involved on the creative side of shows. And you're right, like you're rehearsing four weeks prior to, it's all looking great. And then it's like, something random happens like three weeks two weeks before the performance and literally the wheels literally fall off it and you're like why is this all of a sudden really cack and yeah. rubbish like we were <laughs> well, doing okay yeah, we were fine four like, weeks ago. so then you're living on your nerves <laughs> because you're going will they won't they and the number of times regardless of the hard work that's been put in you're there on opening night going i have no idea this yeah. will either go one way yeah. or the other and i think it's a I think per Amdram companies, where I have most of my experience, they get a really unfair deal, right? Mm -hmm. Because you get professional companies who get a week or two weeks of tech and they've got the time to settle into yeah. the space to get everything right in the theatre that they're going to be doing it. And am am amateur folk get four hours of a yeah. tech rehearsal and then into a dress rehearsal and then to open a night. And it's mm -hmm. like, so we all live in our nerves. Yeah. And we're like, oh, will this go okay or will this not? And I'm like, there's many a show I've gone, well, I have no idea why they pulled that out of because it wasn't looking like that yeah. last week. Do you know what I mean? So I, that song does okay. fill me with fear. It also is one of the musical theatre songs that I would ban, that I would put in my room 101. Oh, because really? I think I've also overheard it because it's sung at the beginning of many a uh, mm -hmm. um, showcase. concert showcase, you know, yeah. variety show. And I'm like, I can't, I can't listen to it anymore. But then it works for that type of, of environment. Of course, it's a perfect so that opening. Is, yeah, it's that... a perfect, perfect opening number, but it, I've heard enough of it. Let's put it in. Well, I think that is how I sort of feel about The Greatest Showman. So yeah, so where it's like that. Oh, here we're we're getting everybody together. We're going to do a big performance. Let's use this song. This so, is the greatest show. And you're like, oh, <laughs> I was okay, like, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but, but I still like the song. Oh, it's yes, a brilliant show. A uh, brilliant yeah, song. I, I, it is one of those ones that is going to be just overplayed for the likes of us who are maybe involved yeah. in it. Um, what did you learn from that? Well, I, I obviously it would get. It gives me the understanding of how actors feel whenever yeah. they're um, doing a show. But it was the first time I asked what the question, like it says another pain where the ulcers grow. Mm. Um, and where we live in Northern Ireland, it is the, the province of Ulster. So I always thought that said <laughs> Ulster. And then I had to be, um, you know, informed that it was actually Ulcer. And an Ulcer is... There's plenty of pains in Ulcer. <laughs> there are. <laughs> um, it's a secretion. It's the lining of the stomach. Um, or small intestine. So. I must have multiple ulcers from shows then. I must be riddled with ulcers. Oh, touch wood, I'm not. Oh, yes. <laughs> no. um, so yeah, that's um, that's what I learned in another another opening. Well, and like I love as well that it's written as opening rather than oh, I've written here. Yeah, no. But I knew what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, so that's how you have to sing it. Another opening, another show. Yeah. Just to kind of fit into those bars. Well, that was wonderful. Ah! Thank you, because that's my that's the next song that my musical lyrical lingo comes from. Wonderwa, mm -hmm. wonderwa. It's the first um, Fred and Kate 
meet each other again for the first time, don't they? And they're like, oh, do you remember when we we were singing? Yeah, it's not um, that they meet each other for the first time, but it's their first time reminiscing about their past. I but they haven't seen each other for a long time until they're put the cast in this show. Yeah, okay. Isn't it depends right? which one you're going with, but yeah, we'll go with the stage version. I might be wrong. No, no, um, no, but they right. then, they, they're they lo- looking back in the past and they go, do you remember that song we used to sing? Wonderbar, wonderbar. And what is a wunderbar? Wunderbar is German mm-hmm. for wonderful. Yep, yeah, it is indeed. Um, did you learn anything else from that? Just that that was... Um, when I first realised that Germans pronounced their W's as V's. Wunderbar. I did that well there, didn't you I? You did it very well. Thank you so much. Yeah. They also sing, I think Fred sings, Gazing down from the young frog. Yeah, I have that too. Uh, in a secret chalet for two, let us drink Lebschen wine, yep. I think, uh, I in the moonlight that. divine. So there's a few things in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, young frog. Yeah. Is a mountain in the Swiss Alps. Alps. The yeah, one Alps. of the main summits of the Bernese Alps. Mm-hmm. It's 4,158 metres high for anybody who likes no, their, their mountains. No, thank you. And then Libchen Mine, L-I-E-B-C-H-E-N, mm-hmm. and then M-E-I-N, just in case there are people out there that are going, that is not how you pronounce yeah. that word. Uh, that's German for my darling or my sweetheart. Yes, it is. And then I also learned um, from that song that a chalet was a small cottage. like, But not like recently, like when I first introduced yeah, this yeah. song. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing better than a wee stay in a chalet, um, let me tell you. Yeah. Um, Fred also sings, We're Alone and Hand in Glove. Mm-hmm. Uh, that saying interested me, intrigued me, Hand in Glove. And what is it? Do you know what that means? No. In a close relationship. Oh, okay. Like your hand on a glove. Very close. Oh. I love Tangent. <laughs> oh. Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Oh when he's, dri- when he's driving him. the car and he like does a big swer- swervy like spinny thing. And then it ends up um, reversing in into the smallest, tiniest like of parking spaces between two big jeeps. And he goes, like a glove. <laughs> That's one of my biggest memories of prime or of um secondary school, like for, um second or third year, like obsessed with Ace Ventura and me and my best mate Brent. We just used to go round to send each other like Columbia. Oh my gosh, that is <laughs> That's hilarious. such a tangent, that's me. <laughs> oh lordy days. Mm, what else? So <laughs> um so the the supporting uh, um characters, Bill and Lois, so they are like struggling actors, singers, and they've been performing in like clubs and stuff and doing all jobs here and there. And then Fred sort of takes a like a an interest in um Lois and then invites her to do the show, um, you know, Tune Up the Shrew, and then she sort of brings her boyfriend Bill along. But Bill isn't the straightest guy. Oh no, he's a he's a crook and he, a gambler. He's a he, real gambler. So so that's actually why the gangsters end up there because he's placed a bet, but he placed a bet in Fred's name. He did, and then s- seconded from the bet. Is that the right word? Or uh-huh. basically ran off. So the gangsters have arrived at the theater looking for Fred, even though it was yeah. Bill who placed the bet. Yeah. Right. So, you can see, just chaotic. This plot is chaotic. It is, it is. And whenever they're rehearsing their boys, um, because Fred not only is starring in this alongside his ex-wife, he is also directing. Mm-hmm. And um, whenever they're doing the boys, and somebody goes, where is that Bill Cahoon? Uh, Calvin. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, Lois goes, I think he's at the chiropodist. <laughs> uh-huh. um, and my dad is a podiatrist, so I always love that she, A, said it wrong. Um, and that, oh my goodness, they've mentioned it in a mm-hmm. musical. Mm-hmm. And it was the first time I, I learned what an IOU was. Okay. So he says, um, no. She goes, how, how much did you lose this time? And he goes, two Gs. Two Gs, you don't even have two bucks. Um, I said, it's okay. I did it in your boyfriend's name. You knew uh, this really uh, well. I know, I know. It's kind of a wee bit bad. Um, it's not. It's a glorious, <laughs> glorious per, um, presentation. Reenactment here. I am loving life. The video, you've got to watch this video on YouTube, folks. <laughs> Like, I, we have actions and everything there. Lauren is on fire today. 
<laughs> I've got my V for Vonderbar and she's got a whole scene going on here. <laughs> It's um, and he goes, I, I did it in your boyfriend's name. Um, and she was like, Oh, do you want to go back to singing in clubs? <laughs> and she keeps going, folks. <laughs> <That's so laughs> and then she sings, like, Why can't you behave? And oh, I love her. That. Anyway, her songs are class. Brilliant. And she's really naughty. She's a naughty wee minx. Oh, like. she, you know, she's got a wee twinkle in her eye oh, as yeah. well. Like, I love it. So, yeah, I learned what an IOE was. Shall we open in Venice then? We open in, in Venice. Venice. Then on to Verona. Verona. Then, then on next to up, Cremona. Cremona. Lots of laughs in Cremona. Our next jump is Parma. Then Dopey Mopey Menace. Then Mantua. Then Padua. Then we open again. Where? In Venice. <laughs> and that song then goes round in a loop. Again. And it gets slower. Again. And slower and slower. Yes. Um. So... <laughs> That was beautiful. I know, I know. Um, we're giving our listeners so much for their money today. Such a you treat. You better leave a good five star <laughs> review. Or today. send us some fan mail. Yes, fan mail, please. We're we're feeling unloved and uncared for. We need our need egos more. boosted. Yeah. <laughs> they sing. Um, just a simple band that roams about the land, dispensing folder all frivolity. That was lovely. Yes, thank you, and in June. Um, so fall, fall de roll, mm -hmm. and then frivolity. I'm like they're big words. Mm -hmm. So um, when I was playing Bill, mm -hmm. I had to do a little bit of research to know what I'm singing. Um, also because I had to keep the four that I was singing with going. Let's okay. keep going. Right. We're nearly there. Yeah. Let's <laughs> keep going. <laughs> um, so fall de roll is a gaudy thing of little value or excessive efforts expended on something trivial. So much to do about nothing. Mm. Linking in there with our William Shakespeare again. Yeah. And then fro frivolity is mm -hmm. a lack of seriousness or being lightheartedness kind yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. That's good. They also mentioned we're not stars like L.B. Mayers. Mm -hmm. And he was the co-founder um, co of MGM. Oh, very good. Um, and also, Taming of the Shrew is set in Italy. So that's why they yes. mention so many. Loads of Italian cities and locations. So obviously, Venice is the capital yep. of Italy. I'm going there this summer. And um, Cremona is actually famous for violins. Oh, very good. And Parma is where we get Parma ham. Um, yeah, I didn't find I think, out about I think I am on a mission to experience and visit all of it like before I die okay because I did Rome and Sorrento last year okay we're doing Venice Florence and Tuscany this oh, year oh wow where to next year do you oh. know what I mean that, that's Will quite cool though like Parma or Mantua Mantua sounds yeah. interesting Mantua and Padua and we open it again where where is the question where where do I open but again, it again it's another year? great musical about touring companies mm -hmm. or a song about you know because they are and we knew this from our lovely interview with Francis where you literally are wake up in one city and then you do your your show and then you travel to another so That's you're like it. where am I in four weeks time <laughs> they are just a simple band that roams around the land anyway that's we open in Venice Open in Venice. Any Next. other musical or Next. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, Dick or Harry. One of my favourite songs. So this is when Lois is in playing the younger sister in Taming of the Shrew. And she has admirers, three admirers. And um, I just love the, the description of the three men yeah. within the lyrics. So this is a, a brilliant example of Cole Porter's wit. Yeah. Um, And if you just read the lyrics, you can get a story of... Tom, Harry and Dick. Yeah. Uh, so it says, my purse has yet to know a silver lining. So mm -hmm. that is just a great way of saying that he's broke. Yep. <laughs> um, and then uh, a thoroughbred uh, patrician. Is that how I say it? That's right. I had that, yeah. Yeah, I... which is an uh, aristocrat. So already from those lines, you can see that one person is completely broke. And yeah. One person um, has money, but it's his family's money. Um. Yeah, that's it. Patrician was like a... A ruling class, ruling class families in ancient Rome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, aristocrats. But like Cole Porter could have just said, I'm a pauper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he didn't. 
and then I just I just love that. And that line, I've made a hole in all the leading rackets from which rip roaring rich I happen to be. And that means to he's only rich because he's gambled mm. all the time. So, you know, just as you say, really clever way of writing yeah. his um characters. I just love that song though. Yeah, it's a good one. Any Tom, Dick or Harry. Any time Tom or Dick. But um but um a dick a dick. Yeah. A dick a dick. A dick a dick. I love that. That actually is one of my all time favourite numbers I've ever choreographed. Really? I had so we had so much fun. Because obviously it's only the three sitters. Yeah. And then Bianca or yeah. Lois yeah. as her actress name. And you, you just have so much fun. You, she just was thrown between the, the three oh, boys wow, and clever. she was loving life. It was fabulous. I loved it. Okay, next I'm going to move on to I've come to live it wealthily in Padua. Probably Padua. not in tune, but Very good. Um, I also do in this, I've written, this is similar to Bless Your Beautiful Hide. Because he doesn't <laughs> care if she's wearing a wig, got knock knees, cross-eyed, Old, old or cold, got a temper if she's going to scream or if she's going to put up a fight. Yeah. So it just, I think, made me have that similarity or see that comparison because Howard Keel in mm. the movie sings this song and then in the movie of Seven Brides for Seven Brothers sings yeah. that. So I was like, hmm, Nothing that's interesting. Like typecast, eh? No, I know. <laughs> yeah. But he's literally, so this is when um, Fred is playing his role of, I think it is, that would be main favourite but I can't remember um, and he's like I'm come to find a wife and everybody's like oh maybe he could go for Kate but he literally says I don't care as long as she yeah. has money yeah. I don't care what she looks like yes he's not he's not the, the best example of a, of a man now no. that's for sure hence one of the songs I hate men I hate men ba -ba -bum. <laughs> now here's the thing with this song I think it's very hard to listen to this song. Oh, You've yeah. got to see it. You have yes. got to see it in context and see the direction of it. And then it is like show stealing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think you, you don't get the full justice of the song by just listening to it on a recording. You've got to see it in action. And it's a great moment of the musical where... Not only is she singing this in character, but she's singing this in real life because even though Fred and her are estranged and they sort of have had a little moment after Wunderbar where they actually go, oh, there's still something there. We yeah. do like each other. And there's, again, a bit of a mix up about who sent flowers. Yes, I was going to say, there's a bunch of flowers that come and she thinks he's She thinks sent he them has sent them to, to her. her but he hasn't and she discovers the card and she decides to open the card during the scene of it, it within Taming of the Shrew and then she realises that he, um, you know, Sent is lying to her. To now, Bianca, didn't they? Yeah, in, yeah. The mu in the musical, he, I think she swears at him. She mm. calls him, I don't want to say it. Can I just... <gasps> right, no, she, don't swear. So... But in the film, she calls him a louse okay. and it is brilliant because obviously they couldn't swear yeah, in the film yeah. um so then she shouts and she goes you louse and that's when he's gone oh no like he's still trying to be a character and he's gone oh no but i've mucked up here i've messed up so <laughs> then she sings this i hate men yeah. and there's so much venom and she's throwing stuff and it's exactly great. yeah she sings you you may be you may be wooed by jack the tar mm -hmm. so charming and so chipper but if you're wooed by Jack the Tar, be sure that you're the skipper, mm, right? Okay. And I just thought it was like make up words, do you uh -huh. know what I mean? But actually Jack Tar is a common English term that was originally used to refer to seamen of the merchant navy. Oh, okay, right. Clever. And the skipper obviously is, is the captain, is yeah. the chief. So, you know, if you're going to be wooed by... One of the uh, seamen of the Merchant Navy, just you make sure that you're the captain, yes. you know, you're above them, you can squash them. As... Yeah. Um, if you expose an older man through girlish optimism, mm -hmm. that word expose, I had no idea, E-S-P-O-U-S-E, -S -S -E, actually means adopt. Oh, 
okay. Yeah, if you adopt an older man through girlish optimism. So that's if you get a man yeah. by being all girly yeah. and optimistic. And then I think she goes on to tell them exactly yeah. what that older man's going to be like. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> she also says, from China, he will bring you jade and perfume from Arabi. Yeah. So um, jade is a green gemstone and Arabi is just what... Um, Araba. Mariba? Araba? Araba. Araba. Like Araba. That, that continent. Is Ariba. Yeah, Ariba. Um, <laughs> there we go. Anyway, <laughs> it's great when I can't pronounce stuff. <laughs> <coughs> I might be wrong. Shall we move on? Yes. To the one number that does not push the plot forward, but my goodness, are we not delighted that Cole Porter wrote it and put it in to Kiss Me Kate. Mm-hmm. We, I wish we were singing it today because we've had quite nice weather this week and actually today it's, it's a, a bit, wee dull. bit overcast. Mm -hmm. Maybe the sun will burn through later and it'll That's be up. a wee scorcher this afternoon because then we can go out and sing It's too darn hot It's too darn hot I like to woo with my baby tonight because each verse is different so I can not remember yeah. the first one Um. It's a great opener for Act Two. Isn't it, it is. So this is where the musical and that nineteen sixty eight movie sixty eight, sorry. She's just flipped her book, I'm yeah. sure you're sixty four. Sixty four, sorry. Nineteen sixty four um film differ. So um I will go into more detail, but in the film, um this is sung by the Lois character, mm -hmm. but it's sung in Fred's apartment with Cole Porter. Oh, okay. And um, it's her, and then they say, actually, honey, we can't fit it into the show. Oh, um, okay. But then in the stage musical, it opens Act 2, and like you said, Much what, better what a wonderful yeah. opening, because it's... Um, it's all the, the chorus yeah. singing it. So because it's, it's their interval too, and they're kind of out the back of the theatre. Yeah. It's roasting, it's warm. They've just done, a, a, you know, the first act. They're kind of like having their, like, reset, and then they go into this ridiculous, like, big song and dance number. Yeah. Where they get more sweaty and more... But what is, what is brilliant about it is, from the very moment that you see um, the, the show opening, there is a mention to the fact it is so mm -hmm. hot mm -hmm. um, and how Baltimore, the heat is so hot and oh, we're, we're roasting here and, you know, we're sweating. And it's just this subtle, like, uh, subtext that is just every single character sort of has a mention. And then all of a sudden, Act 2 opens with this massive dance, fabulous choreography about... It's too darn hot. Yeah. And I just I just think it's so clever how that's just being subtly dropped in and then we've got this big That's true. And it. talking about subtle subtext, shall we talk about the Kinsey report? Oh yes. What an eye opener I got. I know me too. So the the lyrics go according to the Kinsey, Kinsey. report, every average man you know much prefers to play his favourite sport when the temperature er, when the temperature is low. Boom. So, yeah. can, Kinsey Report. Well. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> According to the Kinsey Report, um, the Kinsey Report is two books on human sexual behaviour. Yeah. So, sexual behaviour in males was in 1948, and then the female book was in 1953. Yeah. Alfred Kinsey was, in fact, a zoologist. Yep. Uh, what? Uh, they then challenged conventional beliefs about sexuality. Yeah. Almost most of the data, though, was collected from prison population and male prostitutes. Okay, so 100%. <laughs> so basically, in recap, it's historic reports mm -hmm. on the diversity of sexual orientation. Right? Yeah. We were talking there about subtle subtext. Yeah. Cole Porter was a closeted gay man at that time. And many people think it's a youth... This is a euth euphemism in his lyrics. Oh, okay. Yeah, subtle, but it's in yeah. there. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great, okay. great song and dance number with yeah. a bit of subtle subtext. What well, more could you want? That. We <laughs> all love that. And at the moment, um, for those that are on socials, there is a lot of um little snippets of that dance routine to turn out for the new production indeed that is going to be in the background which we'll talk about it was on a bbc one 
yes. um like you know early evening program uh -huh. last week yeah underwhelmed unfortunately i know i know but i think it was i, don't, I feel like they didn't have the space yeah probably. i think that kind of tried to maybe but there's a lot of it going about so you may if you're on the socials and sort of have um the algorithm showing you musical theater stuff you may see some a lot our, of two darn hot our timing couldn't probably be better for I this know. episode because it is about dope in london but i promise you we just plucked we I wanted know. a golden oldie didn't we because we, we had done a few wee modern ones um and it was just one of the golden oldies that were on our list and we're like yeah. oh god yes do kiss yeah. kate and then it's only when you start doing it, you go, oh, actually, yeah. it's actually, it was a wee revival on its way. They also sing in Too Darn Hot, Mr. Gob for his squab. Mm -hmm. And what is that? Like, what a random lyric, right? Yeah. But Mr. Gob for his squab mm -hmm. is not, because it's too, too, too darn hot. Too hot, too hot. I could go into full on dance routine in your front room. Anyway, uh, in the early 1900s, a gob was an American sailor. And gob is also gob also means a lot of. Oh, okay. okay. And then a squab in the sixteen hundreds meant an inexperienced person. Oh. So, uh, a lot of inexperience. <laughs> oh. Uh, Mr. Gob for his squab. Interesting. Yeah. There you go. Well, it's a fab, fab number. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing I have, just brush up your Shakespeare. Well, I've got it. Yeah. yeah. I I think I left brush up your Shakespeare to you. Okay. <laughs> well, I? I actually don't have a huge amount of Yeah, it. no, I did. I left brush up your Shakespeare to you. I'll do my one first because I think we should okay. end on um, brush okay. up your Shakespeare because we'll probably want to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so... um. Lois or mm -hmm. slash Bianca. It is a bit confusing when you're talking about this yeah, show. And sometimes you refer to them as their actual character name yes. and then sometimes you refer to them as their the taming of the shrew name. Yeah. So um Lois or slash Bianca, she sings But I'm always true to you, darling, in my fashion. <laughs> um another highlight for mm -hmm. me in this show. I love that. Um and our friend Zoe Rainey actually played Bianca in the, um, the UK tour. Of what Kiss a Mika. wonderful woman. Yeah. Um, she said, and it's all about, she's like, she's basically trying to like win Bill back or keep Bill yeah, sweet. Yeah, because. Like, oh no, but I, I might flirt with lots of other boys, that's but it. I do love you. Yeah, that's You're it. Like, she has. Such a wee flirt. She has been flirting and he, you know, she sort of did this why can't you behave mm -hmm. number with him. And then he catches her, but it's also he has had that realization that he does love her. Yeah. Um, I do think at this point he's quite mentioned it yet. It's like after that he has yeah. Bianca, but um. Bianca. Yeah. Bianca. <laughs> but she then is like, no, don't, don't. I, I do love you, but even if I flirt a little bit, it's okay. I always come back to you, and it's just the way That's she. It. So she, she then, it. like, in the song, goes through lots of different men she's mm -hmm. maybe encountered before, yeah. but he's not the one, because yeah. he's not you. Yeah. So she sings, I enjoy a tender pass by the boss of Boston Mass, though his pass is middle class, but not back bay. And I'm always true to you, darling, in my fashion. Mm -hmm. I'm always true to you, darling, in the way. It's so great. I, and I, as she, like, starts, she kind of is this, like, she's not a ditzy character, but she has that potential. You could certainly completely play it that way. And then she kind of gets more into this song, and there's that real, like, yeah. not diva-esque, but... 100%, do, I do you, think. Do you feel think, it is more like that? I think she that? is a bimbo with... A, a, a side of diva and of seductress mm, do you know what yeah, i mean yeah, um yeah, yeah. it's such a brilliant part yeah. to play but anyway um back bay mm -hmm. was an upper class neighborhood in boston oh so boston mass as yeah, in boston mass, massachusetts, massachusetts. back bay upper class oh, neighborhood of boston yeah so clever she also then sings another one of her men mm -hmm. from milwaukee mr fritz of ten moves me moves me to the ritz mm -hmm. mr fritz is full of schlitz and all oh, and full play. of play. But I'm always treating <laughs> um so schlitz uh yeah. s c h l i t z i thought that was just a wee word play on a wee bit of full of s h 
one oh, tea, okay. right? No. No, but Schlitz founded in 1849 in Milwaukee. The Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company became the largest American beer producer in 1902. Oh, oh yeah, you your research. That's well, cool. I know I thought she was just being a naughty girl and saying <laughs> a bad word, but not saying a bad word. And listen, the Cole Porter had so much more context to that lyric. Yeah. Go Cole. Go Cole. Shall we move on to the last of our musical lyricals then? Yeah. Rush up your Shakespeare. So as Timothy has mentioned, the after the IOU that Bill signed in Fred's name, uh, the gangsters come to get their debt. Um, and Fred has no idea what they're talking about. Because um, he didn't place the bet. Didn't place the bet. <laughs> but he then finds a useful way of keeping the gangsters there because um uh, Lily, isn't it Lily? Lily. Yeah, Lily yeah. has decided she's quitting. She's nice Kate. <laughs> she's quitting and she's going to go off with her lovely new fiance and they're Which going... is a, a, a army general, isn't it? It's an yeah. army general in that, yeah. Um, I always feel bad for the army general in Kiss Me Kate because he literally arrives at the very end of the show, <laughs> has very little character profile, like it's literally like we it's... just need another man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so he decide he then says, no, um, oh, I'll be able to get you your money, but I can't get it until the end of the show run. Mm -hmm. But Miss um, uh, uh, Vanessa, Lily, Vanessa here, she is going to leave. So I need you to like be her bodyguard. <laughs> so then she's trapped on this stage and they, they come in and they're dressed as characters and they should have bird. You know? Anyway, yeah. it's long, long, they're, long, they're, long. They are dressed in like costume period yes co like costumes but still have their spats on yeah. their feet do you know what I mean like <laughs> honestly if it's you so haven't funny. seen a, a version of Kiss Me Kate do go and see it because oh. it is it, it's a comedy yeah. like it is laugh out loud it is and it gets more and more chaotic as the show goes on it and it just definitely becomes does. so funny because at the beginning you think oh there's a lot of characters here yeah you know is there the need for all of these but they all all are brilliant and they all um, intertwine, intertwine and, get and it's so much up. so much fun so at the end they discover that their big boss is dead and that the debt then no longer needs paid but they find themselves as Timothy said in front of the like safety curtain like yeah. and they're like so they're looking out on the audience so they're sort of breaking that fourth wall yeah oh it's just hilarious so they're like what do we know? Well, we know how to get broads, so... The goyle today in society <laughs> Go Love for it. classical poetry So whenever I was first introduced to Kiss Me Kate, I was really young and it was before my love of Shakespeare so it always helped me remember where Shakespeare was born so I yeah. just knew that he was born in Stratford on Avon The born <laughs> of Stratford on Avon <laughs> Um, so that was my musical lyrical and go. They also go through an awful lot of his Literally plays. almost every Shakespeare play is quoted in this number, which is just so clever. Yeah. So ridiculously clever. Because Shakespeare's plays, some of the titles and stuff would be are difficult yeah. enough yeah. to like fit in and it like the song rhymes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's basically a poem. Yeah, it's fantastic. set to, to music. It really is. Um But a bloody nightmare to remember all the lyrics like well, I insane suppose... and there's about 7,250 verses like mental <laughs> it is well, that suppose leads us into our connections to kiss me kiss that's a connection I want to forget like no, absolutely talk about post-traumatic stress disorder so like, how many what? times have you sang that song I think I've done it twice with okay. two different gangsters okay never within the context of the show though. yes so it's always been like in a showcase yeah yeah uh, well that is one of my lovely memories of you is performing that and you were so good but do you know that the thing with that that year it was in our one of our showcases and we were like about say 10 minutes short of time like for once we didn't have enough content yeah. to fill you know two acts and it was very last minute of mm -hmm. oh do you know what we'll get we'll, we'll throw in brush up your Shakespeare and I'm like well we <laughs> I think I think we had two three weeks maybe to learn, yeah, to learn, the, feel like that. learn the lyrics and obviously the moves because there is like loads of verses and as we've already said then they threw in a encore like they finish the number the audience clap and cheer yeah. and then the, the gangsters go oh we enjoyed that well, so what I we were really good <laughs> they're clapping us 
well, do you not core? And they go over it. Do you know it? Yeah. So it was a lot to learn. So it was like, oh God, I But it was great. I he was so good. So you did that with, with our friend Matt and you were, you were brilliant. I can't like, remember who I did it with again. Or did Matt and I do it twice in two different... I think you did it in two different... Um, events yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very good. Yeah, so, okay. And, and again, it's like, you know, there's not very many. And actually, we never spoke about them in our um, duos episode. They oh, are they, a great yeah, duo they, they from really a musical. Are, actually. And there's not a huge number of funny we were talking about this in stage school yesterday because we've got two young boys who are really really funny and uh -huh. they actually themselves make a really good wee duo uh -huh. and we were like oh they really are a great like great partnership what musicals are out, are there out there for like yeah. you know male male duos yeah do you know what I mean and you're right actually the, sh the gangsters are uh -huh. are a really good example of that that's interesting that yeah. that came up today because literally I just had that See? conversation yesterday. So um, this podcast takes us in places we never thought. It takes us in places we never thought. I also had was in a product choreographed and was in. That's a bit of nepotism. Isn't it? <laughs> um, I just do it all. <laughs> One man show. <laughs> I'll play cake too. I hate men. Uh. <laughs> to my <love. laughs> Um, no, I did. Um, actually, it's quite funny. We like, I started off choreographing and kind of learnt my trade down in, um, at a, with a company down in Downpatrick. Mm -hmm. And we did loads of shows, like a junior show and a senior show every year. And Kissing Cape was the last show we did, like I did with them. Right, okay. And I choreographed it and then played Bill mm -hmm. or Lucutio, as his was his character name in The Demon of the Shrew. So, and I really, I like really enjoyed it. Mm. And that was the first time I really got to know the show. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then I saw a really good professional um, version of it in the Lyric Theatre a couple of years ago mm -hmm. as well, which was really good. Um, but it is, it's it's a really good show. I, I think it, the music is brilliant. I love Cole Porter's music. And I think because it's funny, it also kind of ticks all the boxes for me. Yeah, I think it is. And it, Jimmy of the Shrew is maybe um, Shakespeare, one of his most straight plays, but there's he wrote comedy so well Very that well. that's why comedy fits into this sort mm -hmm. of storyline too. And um, like you said, Cole Porter's music is is just wonderful. But yeah, I have a real love for Kissing Kate. So my connection to it is that 1964 film. Um, I would have watched every week. Oh. Every week. And what were you? Were you a Kate or were you a Lois? Lois. Were you? Yeah. Because I'm always Um, because in that scene that uh, um where I wish I could remember the actress's name. She's in like out of the out of town or on the town. Um, she's got dark hair. I think anyway, anyway, um, Caitlin, my sister, will be screaming at the podcast right now. So. She sings and performs Too Darn Hot in Fred's apartment with Cole Porter. So I love that the film, they introduce Cole Porter as like writing this new musical and he has this character. She comes in with her band. She's got this fan. She's got the most beautiful pink high heels on, which are tap shoes with an ankle strap. And yes, I have bought those shoes. <laughs> <laughs> previously worn them to death and no longer have them. I actually don't think we've ever talked about this on the podcast. What? Uh, your love for shoes. Your issues that yeah. you have. My issues. When it comes to footwear, <laughs> like insane. So insane. I know. I've got it from my mother. But anyway, <laughs> um, oh, you've got it, Anne Miller. So Anne Lewis Miller Liam is played by Anne, Anne Miller. In Miller. The film. Right, so okay. if you have never seen Anne Miller. Do too, it's too darn hot, mm -hmm. you need to do it. So, in MGM movies, they would have tapped and then recorded the tap um, at a later stage. So, she's not actually wearing her tap shoes, but I was just fascinated the way she dances, she jumps up on the sofa and she kicks book, books off. Me and my sister probably did this routine not gracefully, but did this routine weekly. And I'm sure the front room was a mess. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> By the end. <laughs> the best. Sure your mother and she and does this delighted. thing with 
um, a, va a fan and she has it in front of her face while she's like tapping in a circle. I mean, it is just glorious. This video this week is honestly <laughs> one of the best we've ever shot. <laughs> so um, that that is my connection. So it was my granny and grumps that introduced me um, to Kiss Me Kate. Yeah. So whenever we would have stayed at their house, it was always one of the, the videos, yeah. VHSs, that we had on and it was played to death. See, I haven't really watched that um the that original film very much but i did watch they brought out a dvd of one of the um broadway mm -hmm. productions of kiss me kate which i adored and have watched until the dvd is kind of broken now yeah <coughs> well on youtube <coughs> there is the 2003 um broadway which i shot. did not know until we met today yeah. so guess what i'm doing tonight um, like i will re-watch it yeah. so i spent all um <coughs> our previous week on, uh, on a day off and i just sat and watched it i went from the film mm. to the pro shot nice. and then listened again to the soundtrack i just adore this and i think part of it is you know we've spoke about it before musicals can be emotive and it maybe reminds you of something or it helps you with a certain um time in your life or it's memories that maybe are associated with it. Yeah. So I have lots of lovely memories with Kiss Me Kate. Yeah. That um, cast recording is brilliant though, that 2003 yeah. Broadway one, because you've got Brian Stokes Mitch, Michelle, or Mitchell, um, who plays um, Fred. I first saw him in um, Ragtime. Oh, okay. And yeah. like his voice is so booming and like fantastic. But Kate is played by the legend, the Broadway legend that is uh, uh, Mary in Mazzy. Yes. Who, like, is no longer with us, sadly. Okay. And that was a massive thing for the Broadway community mm. and musical theatre on the whole because vocally and as an actress and as a person, she was just, she stood, like, mm. five or six steps ahead of everybody else. Like, she was just sensational and she sounds sensational and she was sensational as Kate in, yeah. this, in that in that production so it's always nice to have things yeah. like cast recordings and you know that dvd of that just historically so that people can who maybe weren't yeah are only coming to yes. things like kiss me kate now yeah. or she was also in ragtime she played the mother um you know they can still experience yeah. that voice and that actress that's so special yeah but it is such a beautiful musical so right now it is it hasn't quite opened no, no i it's think it's about still to in, though yeah it's still in maybe in previews it's going to be in the barbican no it's meant to be a, a short six week um run but i was talking to your dad yesterday who has tickets oh he hasn't told me that yet oh sorry oh my goodness <laughs> he has tickets that man <laughs> So he is going, and Stephanie Block yeah, is in Jay it. Block. Uh, Stephanie J. Block is in who it. Who we've talked about on the podcast. Who we have, she is playing Kate. And then a lovely homegrown talent, Adrian, Adrian Dunbar. Dunbar from is, uh, good old Northern Ireland. Good old Northern Ireland. Um, he is playing Fred. and um, In his own accent, by the sounds of it, or was that just for that TV program? That, I that think TV it is in we his. No, I think it is in his own accent. I think they're going to put a real spin on it. I think so too. I don't Which, know how it's going to work. I'm not sure. But I, we are planning on maybe being in London. And yeah. if it is still on, I will be there. Yeah. If I'm there by myself, I'm there by myself. So yes, I was again a little bit jealous that your dad's gone. He's also got tickets for Imelda Staunton and Hello Dolly. So I have to go now because I am not going to allow that man to lord it over me that he's seen her <laughs> in Hello Dolly. Um, I haven't. Yeah, I know. Oh, just honestly. But. Yeah, so there's a bit a bit of a buzz about Kiss Me Kate at the moment because Kiss me Kate. um they are they are doing a production of it which is very exciting. And I do love it and it's it so magical brilliant. and there's just so much context in it and Cole Porter is just so clever and it just gives you a real sense of Mm, satisfaction after yeah. because you're like that was a well-rounded musical the music was great the lyrics were great the choreography is usually mm. great um and the storyline is just funny it is a shame that we didn't get more cool you know successful cool porter musicals is not i know but the ones we have wow are are there in history mm. and will continue to be yeah. fabulous yeah 
So that was Kiss Me Kate. I that really was so lovely. That this week, I yeah. love that you're going to go home and, and watch it. Kiss me, Kate. Kiss me, kiss me, Kate. Kiss me, kiss me, Kate. Kiss me, Kate. Kiss me, Kate. Kiss me, Kate. That's what they did then. Oh, did they? So did she Kiss me, Kate. Oh, da 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 da. <laughs> oh, I will never be. I will never be. I will never be. I will never be. And there's some oh, other yes, songs that we actually haven't spoken about, and they are yeah. just as good too. So oh, the um, whole soundtrack's amazing. Like. I would love if you go and listen to it. Then let us know. So send us a wee message on our fan mail. So yeah. if you're listening on any of our um podcast host platforms, you can click the little button that says send a text message. Um, and let us know what you think. Yeah, because you're always true to us, <laughs> darling, in your fashion. Oh, you're just so professional. <laughs> Until next week, lovely people. Bye. Bye.